Dude, first of all, congratulations on your comeback. I, that, you know, you're a great guy. And when there's someone I like who loses a bunch of fights in a row and you get into this skid, it's ha- it's hard to watch. I can't imagine what it was like being you, mm-hmm. you know, to have uh, a young child and to be dealing with all of this going on. I mean, it's like losing your top. But then to come back the way you did against a really f- tough guy in a sun sow and get arguably the KO of the year. I mean, you got to be feeling pretty f- good. Cody Garbrandt, the man with an incredible story, a very gifted and capable fighter, a decent human being with a kind heart and one of the most unpredictable individuals in the whole industry. Not that long ago, No Love gladdened us with his victory in the main octagon, which doesn't happen too often recently, and now he is looking to keep on going in the same direction. Soon, he will return to the cage at UFC 296 and considering that, we would like to present to you a compilation of 5 cases when Cody Garbrandt shocked the world. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with 4 words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go! Number 5. Marcus Brimage The best opener for today's compilation would be Cody Garbrandt's debut performance inside the world's best league. On January the 3rd of 2015, having a streak of 5 knockout victories, both clean and technical ones, No Love got an opportunity to break into UFC's roster. He secured the spot at the 182nd tournament with DC and Bones headlining the event. His opponent was a fighter you happen to know really well, at least from the documentary about Conor McGregor, Marcus Brimage, who already faced another champion a few years earlier. Brimage takes on Cody Garbrandt in the prelims to one of the most anticipated nights in UFC history. UFC 182 prelims, January 3rd. As you already know, the first appearance of No Love in the main MMA organization was a very significant event in the life of a young prospect. The promise given to the little boy boosted Garbrandt's determination and motivation by the double. Cody knew that the outcome of this bout means more than just a record and fighting career, that's why he entered the cage ready and extremely focused. Out of 15 minutes, he used 14 and 50 seconds, showing the company's representative, his opponent and the entire bantamweight division that he is dangerous at any given moment up until the final bell. In the end, the guy carried on the tradition that he started in the local leagues of finishing fights with flashy knockouts. Back up for now! Brimage is out on his feet, Mike. Oh, oh that's it, that's big it. Punch Herb Dean's gonna stop it. It is all over! Wow! Cody Garbrandt the last. stops Marcus Brimage! Number 4. Takeya Mizugaki Next, we have a fight featuring No Love, the result of which earned him the title shot. But it's too early for that, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. By August the 20th, 2016, Cody added three more wins to his resume, trying to follow the set tendency as closely as possible, find the chin of his opponents and the ways to score finishes. In other words, riding a streak of nine victories with zero losses, Garbrandt has his next fight in the main octagon. His opponent was a respected Japanese veteran who had a competitive experience not only in the early days of the world's best league, but also in the WEC, which eventually merged with the aforementioned promotion. And the bout was held at UFC 202. Um, I think for me, like if I'll see something, if I like watch the KM Mizugaki, maybe I'll look down on him. You know, I, I don't. I have respect for him. He's a veteran. He's been in here since the WEC days. But a lot of it, he has, he's made his name off being tough. And uh, he's very, not super skilled at anything, but he's very well-rounded and he takes people to decisions. So I don't want to overlook him. So I just have my coaches overlook him. I might see something like technically he's not as sound as me. So I just look at him, he's in my most dangerous fight. I don't like to look at film. I just like to think that this guy is my next fight. He's super dangerous, he's tough. And I just go out there that we're both 0-0 and we're going out there you know, to get our first wins. And we're both hungry, so I don't look at any past fights really. Uh, that keeps me motivated. As we already mentioned earlier, this very victory brought No Love straight to the title fight. Why? Let me think. In my humble opinion, a spectacular finish after 48 seconds from the start of the fight is the best answer to this question. Cody got done with Mizugaki extremely quickly and efficiently. 
earning his 10th anniversary victory in the professional career. It was great, you know, I had a great camp. My coaches got me ready, my teammates got me ready uh, for Takea. You know, I was taking nothing away from him, a lot of respect for him. I knew that I had to get in there and uh, get him hurt and take him out. People like French oh, just Mike tagged him with a beautiful right hand. Looking oh. for the finish. Hit it, it's all it. over. That's it. Just like that. Number three, Thomas Almeida. Now we have a fight that took place right before Cody faced the Japanese. Having an eight-fight winning streak with seven finishes, Cody Garbrandt clashed with an undefeated Brazilian prospect in the face of Thomas Almeida. By that time, the latter was doing so good that he was ranked number seven in the division and was seen as one of the most dangerous fighters in his weight class. And his resume spoke for itself, 21 wins and zero losses. While No Love wasn't even in the top 15, such an intriguing fight took place in May of 2016 as the main event at UFC Fight Night 88. I'm a gamer. From amateur all the way up, I've always fought the same. I have relentless pressure. Oh my! Finally being in a main event in the UFC against a very highly talented fighter in Thomas Almeida. These are the fights I dreamed about as a kid. Super excited when I was offered the Thomas Almeida fight. Very tough, you know, fighter that's going to bring out the best in me. He's never fought an opponent like me that knows how to hit. My hand speed's better than his. I have more power than him. Once I find his chin, he'll be going to sleep. What can be said about this fight? To put it lightly, and best believe, that's the best way that we can put it. Cody Garbrandt ended the career of Thomas Almeida. Because further on, he had an abrupt decline. Despite the Brazilian's impressive and scary resume, No Love entered the octagon with an intention to cut his head off. As it was said in the interview before the bout, the American just needed to find Almeida's chin to end the fight on his terms. It took him less than three minutes from the start of the fight to do so, and then it resulted in a stiff knockout and performance of the night bonus. Definitely I believe in myself. I believe I'm the hardest hitter in my division. Um, but I felt his energy. I felt his energy at weigh-ins. I could just feel a different vibe from him. And uh, right off rip, I know he's a slow start starter so I knew how to get on him and uh, once I knew I landed him one of the shots was hard I saw in his eyes he started bleeding and they wouldn't come forward on me like he does in other, other fights so I knew I had to jump on him early like I said I'm gonna knock him out in the first round he's a slow starter I had to get after him but I saw the, the speed difference and definitely the power difference. Almeida's getting diced up right oh, now he's hurt! Huge right hand! Almeida's out! Almeida's out! Cody Garbrandt by first round! Number 2. Rafael Asuncao Now we move a little bit further in the future, if you will, to talk about the fight between Cody Garbrandt and another Brazilian veteran. By June of 2020, which was a tough time for mixed martial arts and combat sports in general, No Love had another attempt to return to the winning path. A long train of misfortunes that began already in November of 2017 did not let Garbrandt escape it even for a second, making him work even harder to break this vicious cycle. You know, I just got back to work. You know, I just I didn't want to let it all go to waste. You know, no matter what I was going through, just grinding through all the bullshit. You know, there's a lot of bullshit that life throws at you. You just got to grind through that stuff. And um, as simple as, as that, I know I said it in the, the past interview or the past question, it was like, Hard work pays off. You just always got to remember, hard work will always pay off. You can be the most talented, the most gifted, the most, the fastest, the strongest, whatever. And if you're not working hard, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the results you want. And that's all you have to do is just grind. Nobody cares about your excuses. Nobody cares about what happened yesterday, today. You know what you have going on next week. It's about what's going on. Or did you put in enough work for this camp? Did you? Put in enough time to go in there. If Rafael's going to give me my best pace, he's going to be able to withstand everything that I am. Am I able to do enough than him to win this fight? And I just know that I've done that. I know that I can go in there and put him in deep waters and drown his ass. No Love's intention could be seen with a naked eye. The American fighter desperately wanted to stop his streak of losses and did everything he could to achieve the set goal. And he did it! With just a second left in the second round, Cody slept Rafael Asuncao with one precise attack, an incredible knockout and another stoppage victory on Garbrandt's resume. I kept motivated, I kept driven, I uh, just kept having to pick myself up from the ground zero and build myself back up mentally, physically and emotionally. 
And uh, my passion and love is here for the sport to stay. And um, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be back. Number one, Dominic Cruz. And at the very end, with no exaggeration, we have the best performance of No Love's professional career. On December 30th of 2016, in the co-main event of UFC 207, the whole fighting world witnessed all the potential of Cody Garbrandt and got introduced to his sadly triumphal story. By that time, the American prospect had a record of 10 consecutive victories and even though he wasn't even in the top 5, the combination of his charisma, unshakable confidence and spectacular finishes drew the attention of the UFC matchmakers. After beating Takeya Mizugaki, No Love called out the current bantamweight champion and one of the greatest performers of all time, Dominic Cruz. I find his chin and I'll have the belt. The Dominator's response was quite simple and obvious. He's a knockout artist. This is what Cody Garbrandt's known for, and he takes pride in that. He said that himself, I hit harder than anybody in this division. I take less damage and I get hit less than anybody in the entire UFC put together. So your, your knockout power really means absolutely nothing. In fact, the fact that you're a knockout artist is actually what's going to work against you because every time you throw, you're going to be wasting energy and beating yourself, missing. The world's best league believed in No Love's potential and gave him an opportunity to face Dominic Cruz. Um, each fight, I fight a different style of fight. I uh, make adjustments on the fly accordingly. So according to what Cody brings in, I'll adjust in there uh, with my instincts. Everything I do is off instinct. So I've already put all the thought into this. I understand I built him in my camp. I have plenty of pro boxers that I've worked with, plenty, plenty of pro kickboxers. Uh, top-notch wrestlers, so I'm prepared. I mean, Juck and, uh, Justin Buckholtz, I mean, that guy got knocked out from Jeremy nasty too, just like Cody's been knocked out a couple times, so he's right. probably still trying to wake up from that. Right. None of those guys have a clue what to do with me, so there's nothing they can tell him. And he's going to figure that out after the first round when he's in there punching, he's in there missing, he's looking for that big punch that he's landed on everybody else, and he goes to land that punch, and I'm gone. I'm a ghost, I'm not there. And then he goes to do it again and I'm gone and I'm not there. And then he's getting hit and he's getting hit. And when he goes and sits on that stool after the first round and he looks at his corners, he's gonna know his corners have nothing they can tell him. I've fought them for 27 plus rounds. I've maybe lost five rounds of those rounds against the corners that he's gonna have there, against his teammates, the teammates that I've made a living off of, Team Alpha Fail, so. If you saw the video on our channel about Cody Garbrandt's journey and who was beside him during a walkout to the Octagon in pursuit of the championship, you know very well that no verbal insult from Dominator towards Garbrandt had any chances to reach the target. It was the perfect, most focused and confident version of no love that Cruz could face at that moment. Too emotional. He does not appear to be. He seems loose and relaxed and doing well and he just caught Dominic and he caught him again. Full attack! Wow! Look at this. He's mocking Dominic. <laughs> Shortly speaking, Cody Garbrandt broke Dominic's matrix. Fight! We certainly do. Oh, good count! Oh, he hurt him! He hurt him! And completely dismantled him. Good combination by Cody. Oh, and Dominic clipped him. And he is talking trash to Dominic and laughing at him. Oh! Oh! Goodness! Cruz is back up, at least for now! They go the distance. What a fight. Thus, there was the new king in the weight class and the end of Dominator's era. Do you think that a 32-year-old No Love has chances to come back and resuscitate his championship aspirations? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.